Hey artists, it's Wednesday, Watercolor Wednesday. Today's episode is awesome. I'm gonna walk you through how to paint a beautiful sunflower on Yupo paper. So let's get started. Hey, if you have a reference photo that you've taken, awesome, definitely use that. But if you're looking for a reference photo, there's a great site available to artists and photographers for reference photos, and it's called Paint My Photo. So it's pmp-art.com. You can create an account and find all the photos you'd probably ever need to paint on that site. I use it all the time and it's awesome. And now I'm just going to talk about the supplies that I'm going to be using for this sunflower. So I've chosen four paints to give myself a limited palette, which is a really nice trick to do to make your colors pop and kind of avoid mud. So I have Cranacridone Rose, Phalo Blue, Green Shade, Cobalt Teal, and Azo Yellow. And all of these are M. Graham, except for the Phalo Blue Green Shade, which is a Daniel Smith. We're also going to be using Ink Tense pencils, a Derwent watercolor pencil. We're also going to be using some salt to enhance the texture in the middle of the sunflower. We'll be doing that later. And a sea sponge, also for the texture in the middle of the flower. Then I obviously I have my water, my brushes, and my blotting towel, and I use microfiber for that. All right, so every painting for me starts with transferring my image onto the painting paper itself. Today we're using Yupo paper. So what I do is I load the image in Photoshop, I make any edits I want, then I figure out where I would like it on the page itself, and I scale it to size. Then I simply trace it using a permanent marker and Starving Artist tracing paper. I really like this tracing paper because it's bleed proof, which means you won't get permanent marker on your computer monitor. But if you do, and I have, you just use um, a dry erase marker and kind of color over it and then wipe it off with a Kleenex and it comes right off. So that's really nice. So after you trace the image onto your tracing paper, you can either tape this onto a window or you can use carbon transfer paper to get it onto your painting paper. If it's daylight, I always use a window. I just love that method. So I'll use artist tape and tape this to a window and then I'll tape my paper over it and I'll be able to see through and just trace it onto my painting paper. So I've already done that and it's right here. And so now it's a little too dark for watercolor. It would show through if I painted it like it is right now. Um, so I'm going to use my kneaded eraser and make the lines really light. All right, so when I'm painting with Yupo, I do it a little differently than when I paint on watercolor paper in that I have to work in sections. So if I were to paint in, in a whole layer and then do it layer by layer, which is what you typically do when you're doing it on watercolor paper, everything would bleed together because it takes a while for these for the paint to dry on Yupo paper. So I like to work in sections. So the first section I'm going to do is this yellow, so the yellow of the petals. So I'm just going to take my yellow and put it where I colored or where I drew in all the yellow for the petals. And it's going to look like one large petal here to begin with, which is what we want. And then later on we're going to come back and refine it. So go ahead and paint in your petals. All right, so while this is still wet, I'm gonna mix up a little orange with my rose and my yellow. And then I'm gonna go along the bottom edge and have this help to start to find some of the petals as well as bring in that color that we're looking for in the bottom. All 
All right, so I'm going to add in a little bit of purple at the bottom too to help bring it into the center, to bring the petals into the center a little bit. And the background is just going to be cobalt teal, which I really like. So I'm going to get started by just painting a layer of water in the background area. And that way, when I add the paint, it'll kind of go wherever the water is and make fun surprise patterns. So I'm doing the background in sections so they don't, the sections don't dry before I have, before I'm ready to start painting. Alright, so you can see right here that the paint is pooling and kind of resisting the paper. And that's because I got the oil from my finger on the paper, and we know that oil and water just don't mix. So I have scrubber brushes for this. These are really nice for this purpose, and I'll just kind of scrub on the paper. And this will help the paper hold the paint. So if you run into that, just kind of have to scrub it off. And I see that it's bleeding over here, but I'm really liking how that's looking. So I'm gonna leave it alone for now. And I can always come back later and, and fuss with it then. All right, so this area really went to town a little more than I would have liked. So I'm just gonna scrape it back a little bit. And I'm gonna replace it with some of that beautiful yellow. And you can see I'm just lifting off some paint to create some nice highlights in the petals. All right, so what we have left are the green petals and the center. Both of those are surrounded by some wet areas, so we're gonna go ahead and let this dry, and then we're gonna come back and tackle those areas. All right, so I'm gonna use my Tangerine Ink Tense Pencil and start defining some of the petals. I'm going to also add a little bit of the sun yellow pencil to try and recover some of this beautiful yellow. All right, I'm enhancing these highlights at the bottom of the petals with some fuchsia. All right, so the background and the yellow petals have dried. So now we get to do the green leaves and stem and then the purple center. So let's get started. I'm just gonna add water to the center. I'm touching the edges just a little bit. Then I'm gonna add my Ultramar ultramarine and cronacridone rose to make a purple center. And I'm gonna let it blend on its own in the painting itself. All 
This color is Shiraz. And I'm just making some designs here to try to facilitate the blending of the blue and the red. This is Chili Red. And I'm filling in the other areas of the center. And sometimes the center here has a lot of water in it. So I'll just use my pencil to bring that out to other areas. All right, let's let the center dry like that and move on to the leaves and stem. If there's a lot of paint on your brush, it's nice to kind of put that back into your palette instead of cleaning it all off. You save a lot more paint that way. All right, so I'm just getting this area wet with some clean water. All right, I'm gonna grab some yellow. Mix it with my cobalt teal to get a nice bright green. I'm also adding some ultramarine for the areas of the leaves that have shadows. When there are smaller areas like this, sometimes I don't bother to wet that area first. I'll just jump right in. All right, I'm gonna take some salt now all over that blue area that's still drying. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a little bit of red. All right, so I'm gonna define the details in the leaves with my colored pencils. I'm gonna start with yellow. You can see I'm even picking up some blue paint with this pencil. So using pencils with Yupo paper this is wonderfully versatile. All right, I really like the way that looks. So I'm just gonna go in and do some finishing touches on the petals to make them look a little bit more detailed. I love taking paint away to push it out and create highlights kind of surrounded by this paint halo that ends up just being gorgeous. So it's a pretty cool thing you get to do with you will.
All right, artists, I hope you had a blast painting that sunflower on Yupo paper. I know I did. I love Yupo paper. It's an awesome surface to paint on. So if you need the notes from today's episode, the link is in the comments below, and I will see you next week on Watercolor Wednesday. I'm fudging it all up. Thanks for watching!